This hotel has everything you need for a fantastic trip to Bogota. Full stop. Check out the full tour to see why, coming up. Parque 93 or 93rd Street Park is the center point of one of Bogota's best little neighborhoods and the Salvio Parque 93 overlooks every inch of it. The hotel has many strong points, among them this great location. Let's take a closer look. Skip to the next chapter to start the tour now. Bogota has a really straightforward layout with numbered north-south avenues and east-west streets dominating the area that you'll probably be visiting. From the airport to Salvio is around a 30-minute ride to the neighborhood of El Chico, which surrounds the park. Around the park, there are many restaurants and shops, including plenty of coffee shops, pharmacies, and convenience stores alike. The entrance to the hotel is on the side street. The ground floor is just the security desk. For reception, we head up to the fourth floor. Note that if you're searching for this hotel in Google Maps, let's say, you'll find it as Salvio Aparta Suites, not just Salvio as listed on most booking sites. Besides the check-in desks and small lounge area, the fourth floor is wrapped with a terrace spanning the length and width of the building and fronting the park itself. Built in 2019, the property has 72 rooms or apartments, or apart to suites, depending on who you're asking, spread across nine floors. Plus we have the fourth floor for conference rooms and common areas, and the 11th floor for the breakfast area and the rooftop bar. The design throughout the hotel is modern and neutral, with a distinctly Latin feel to it that I can't really put my finger on. One of the things I'm not really a fan of though, is how they designed the rooms that connect. They created a large shared entry for certain sets of rooms that is just dead space if you're not actually using the rooms connected. Inside the room though, it's a really nice and thoughtfully laid out space. This is an executive room among their many categories. To my knowledge, all of the rooms have balconies and all rooms except the smallest have kitchenettes and many extra apartment-like areas such as the dining table. Especially with the giant walk-in closet, it would be pretty easy to be happy here for a few weeks if necessary. The bed was super comfortable, if not a bit soft, and there was plenty of space for lounging, working, or even entertaining on a small scale. The side tables both have outlets, kinda within easy reach, just behind on the walls.
In the entryway is a small cupboard. I actually thought this was the main closet before I opened it and was surprised by how shallow it was. But need not to worry, the real closet is pretty big. Across is a fairly well-stocked kitchen, typical of what you'd find in any professional service department. Upon check-in, a few bottles of water and espresso pods were given, but not replenished. Kinda sorta hidden back here is the entrance to the bathroom, and first, the pass-through closet. Walking into the bathroom, there's plenty of space to spread out. Perhaps not the best use of space, but it's still very functional. Here, they're also featuring Loto del Sor products that I raved about in my previous video at the Four Seasons. And finally, we have the one thing that actually in the end made me choose this hotel over the Click Clack Hotel, which is just around the corner. It's the massive balcony and the view of the park. Walking out, we're facing due east, so each morning the sun is going to peek over those mountains. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And check out the links in the description below for other videos on this trip, info about our new channels coming soon, and other ways to support. A very sincere thank you in advance. In the distance on the left, you can kinda make out Monserrate, and then further south in the distance is the rest of that strip of Bogota that I drew out before. Now, up to the 11th floor, we have the breakfast area, which, especially towards the later hours of service, was always packed. We'll take a closer look at that in a second, but first, the rooftop bar. If you noticed in the intro, I mentioned the worst thing about the hotel is the elevator lines at night. Well, that's because this is a very popular bar, and I can definitely see why it's so popular. I just wish that they reserved one elevator that just went from the ground floor straight up to the 11th for bar guests and the other one for hotel guests. 
Overall though, it's a very small worst thing. The views up here spill out to the north and on a clear night, you'll be able to catch a beautiful sunset as well. Back over to breakfast, each morning they offer a small buffet with some of the essentials along with rotating soups and hot dishes. In addition to this, there's also a small supplemental menu for egg dishes and the like. Near the check-in area, there's also a small gym, but unless you're accustomed to Bogota's elevation, I really don't think you're going to be running that far. Finally, outside on the park side, there's a mixed-use area on the ground and lower levels. They're more associated with the hotel than actually part of it, but there's a mixture of fast casual and sit-down dining that just adds to the food scene that already surrounds this ideal slice of Bogota. And that is all there is to write, so let's get into the flip-flop score. No surprises here, I thoroughly enjoyed my stay. The only ticks were for what felt like a bit of a hands-off level of service from reception, and also not replenishing the amenities daily in the room. Both small things, and possibly because it's more of a service department building. But to be fair, they don't market themselves like that on all of the booking sites. Overall, a solid 91 out of 100. Again, if you enjoyed this video, Please subscribe for two new videos each week. Next up, we have the W Bogotá.